and they want to put taxes selectively on UK and German and US and Canadian and Australian power plants while China and India and Mexico and 163 other nations are tax exempt. That's discriminatory. That's wrong. And at the very tip of the spear for decades, advisor to Margaret Thatcher, newspaper editor Ed Venner, top critic of man-made global warming, proven right. Now they call it climate change. Proving the sun is the main driver of climate change, like proving the sky is blue, but he proved it with the science, is Lord Christopher Monckton joining us covering the Paris world government talks that in the establishment's own words is the greatest conflagration of world leaders in history, pushing for world government and a new environmental enforcement arm that will arrest chief among them, Lord Christopher Monckton, Mark Moreno, Alex Jones and others. Imagine reading newspapers openly calling for your arrest. These are flaming naked totalitarians that haven't been seen since Adolf Hitler strode the earth in his booted feet. We're alive in epic times. He was blocked from the Durban South Africa meeting a few years ago. He skydived into the event and now joining us via Skype. He skydives via the electronic web invented by the West into our studio today, joining Donald Trump, Ted Nugent, and others. We salute our knight in shining armor against the tyrants. Lord Moncton, thank you for joining us. Well, what a pleasure and what an introduction. I'll send you your usual $100 tomorrow. That was outstanding, Alex. Many, many thanks. And I've had we to turn you. down the partying that goes on at these conferences tonight. I've been invited to a really wonderful party by the Collectif des climato-realistes, that's the French climate skeptics, so that I could be on with you this hour to bring you the update here from Paris. We've had 147 three-minute speeches by world leaders, so-called, all singing from exactly the same tedious hymn sheet. There was only one exception, and that was Mr. Obama, who overran his time and gave us 14 minutes of the usual lying platitudes about global warming. But the agenda is ever more naked, exactly as you've just described. It is crony capitalism to the nth degree. And crony capitalism, of course, technically speaking, that is fascism. And it is at the same time a collectivist desire that everybody should be made to toe one scientific and political line. And as you have rightly said, Alex, there are calls here at this conference from the various fringe lunatic groups that people like me should be arrested, tried, imprisoned, and even executed wow. for daring to suggest that their climate change scam is the scam that it is. But we are fighting back. We have held an alternative conference here for the last couple of days, at which I spoke yesterday, one of the opening speeches, and I proposed an idea which had been put originally to me by Professor Niklas Myrna, the great world expert on sea level. He says it's not going to rise very much. He has established an international committee to bring back ethics to the earth sciences called the International Geoethics Committee. That has been launched at our conference. And I have been asked by that committee to establish a fraud investigation team. We are going to go after just two or three of the biggest fraudsters. We're going to gather evidence against them. We're going to submit that evidence to a committee of professors and doctors of science so that they can review it thoroughly and make sure that the job we've done is serious and fair and correct and scientifically true. When that has been accepted, it will go in to the public authorities in various countries and that evidence will be submitted in a dossier which will bear the names of those professors who are going to support us. And I have already had conversations with uh, Congressman Lamar Smith a few weeks ago in Washington. He, of course, is doing a similar exercise. You've just shown that on the screen. Uh, he's subpoenaing the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration in the United States for to find out how it was that they tampered with the temperature data to turn the long pause in global warming which their data set showed until a couple of years ago, and the satellite data sets still do show it. Now it's 18 years, nine months, no warming at all. And here's subpoenaing them to find out why they changed their record just in time for the Paris meeting so that it would show global warming that has not in fact been happening over the last two decades. 
So we are all, in our different ways, moving in on these people and surrounding them, and we are going to take them to the criminal courts. Because those who have lied and cheated and tampered with the data and uh, said that their results are different from what they really were, these people are fraudsters. They are doing huge damage to the poor people of the world who need fossil-fueled electricity. Coal-fired power can give them electricity at under $20 per megawatt hour. It's the cheapest form of electricity available on the planet. We should be meeting in urgent session all the nations of the earth to work out how to give these nations that don't have electricity. How to deliver clean coal power to Africa and Latin America now. Straight away. And this is something which would cost a tiny fraction. And it would reduce their population growth. Non-working non global warming go away. We've but, but sir, very, Lord very Moncton, fair. wouldn't it also reduce their population growth to give them industrialization? That is the, that is the truth. I mean, the, the kindest and the only way to stabilize the populations of countries where there is overpopulation, by which I mean the population is growing so fast that the nation can't support it. These are the poor countries. If you stop them being poor and they become so that everybody has at least got a square meal and a roof over their head and some decent education and health care, then suddenly the population will stabilize all by itself. You don't need to have... And a they admit that. So let me ask you this question. The only world leader out of over 150 to say it's a fraud, other than you, House of Lords, the only... It's been abolished. The only person there as a world leader saying it's a fraud is Putin. Why do you think Russia has finally told the truth and come against it? I think the, the, the development of Putin coming out and beginning to indicate, it's still fairly carefully phrased, you have to watch it. He's trying to play both sides against the middle a bit, as they often do in Russia. You know, he's a good chess player. But I think uh, he's, he's beginning to express skepticism because he can no longer make money out of this scam. He suddenly realized that if the West does go for shutting down all fossil fuel use, then that means the pipelines into the West from Siberia, which are his major source of income, it's made Russia once again a great power after the terrible economic collapse that followed the, the fall of communism. Um, that gas, he can't sell it to us if we're going to say we're going to generate all our power from wretched windmills. So he suddenly realized that in having temporarily backed the global warming scam because it enabled him... He's slitting Russia's throat. Stay there and finish up when we come back. You're right. He said it's a yeah. military operation to shut down nation states, which it is. All selectively enforced. Lord Moncton, straight ahead from France. Coming up in the next segment, your questions or comments for Lord Moncton, 800-259-9231. First time calls. 800-259-9231. There is no one in the fight against this global government regulation taxation grid like Lord Moncton. I don't tell the story to brag because when I was a teenager, I didn't know that I was one of the most popular people in school because I wasn't into being popular. I was into playing football and going after girls. I didn't get into the debates about who was cool, who wasn't. But I remember being, say, a freshman and seeing the girl that was a junior and the most beautiful cheerleader and people talking crap about her because they were jealous of her and kind of joining in. Now, the next year when she was a senior and I was a sophomore and I was dating her, I wasn't talking bad about her anymore. And the reason I tell that story is what's wrong with this elite? Because elites aren't perfect and elites come and go. But I don't see a lot of cases in history where you have an elite that are in charge and they want to tear down the success of a country or a culture or a system or an Anglo-American establishment. It's one thing if you're out of power to talk trash. But if the establishment's in power, why would they want to wreck the society when its wealth and freedom made them even more powerful? I mean, I look at Roman emperors, British emperors, other emperors. I mean, a lot of them were altruistic because they were running a giant successful empire. How did we get an elite that want to make us poor? How do we get an elite that wanted to break up the family? What do you call this group, Lord Moncton, as a historian? I really respect your views why I'm asking. I don't see a lot of cases in history where we get sick freaks that want to wreck prosperity, wreck beauty, wreck strength. Who are these people, Lord Moncton? I'll tell you who they are. They are cowards. 
They are cowards because the left, which now lies about everything, is so vicious in its attacks on those of us who stand against it and are effective against it, that those who want to succeed and go far in politics have learned that on any matter where the left has spoken, they'd better keep silent or the left will vilify them as they vilify the likes of you and me. So it's bullying. And the, these are cowards. And I think we have to face down the left. We have to start, as I say, prosecuting the backsides out of them so that they realize they can't get away with telling lies anymore about this to the cost of tens of millions of lives every year of these poor folk in, in the countries like Africa and Latin America that could have electricity if we got on with it and made sure they got electricity, instead of which they're being denied it in the name of saving the planet from a non-problem because the left want to show who's boss. And if people are cowards, they won't stand up to them. So they already run things, but they want to wreck the system just to mount our head? Or what is it? They want to wreck the system because they know the moment they speak out, as you and I speak out, they will be the victims of left-wing propaganda, just as you and I are. And they don't think that they would survive long in politics if they did that. They are cowards. And that's why they have drifted along with this climate change nonsense. Is that why Swiss women, or not Swiss women, uh, uh, Swedish women, say they don't want to report rapes? I mean, it's crazy. It's beginning to get like that. Now, if it's anything that the left is running, and you dare to speak out against it, and you become effective, you become known for speaking out against it, they will attack and attack and attack and attack until they've destroyed your reputation. And the governing class has learnt this, and is frightened of it. This is a technique invented by Goebbels. He used to do it to his opponents. Sure. Then it was picked up by Ion Mihai Pacepa, who ran the Desinformatia Directorate of the KGB, and they recruited a million communist agents who were Western citizens, who were not known to be working with the KGB, and their sole job was to go around destroying the reputations of anyone who opposed the left-wing Communist Party line. And now the environmental communists are doing exactly the same thing. Indeed, they are largely the same people. Some of the older ones were actually recruited by Pacepa. They're still in place. They're still pursuing the communist line, even though communism itself has apparently collapsed. So what has happened is that communism is reinventing itself in the environmental movement, which it captured. We listened today to uh, Patrick Moore, the founder of Greenpeace at our conference. He made a very powerful speech in, uh, in, in saying that he had fought genuine environmental battles and won nearly all of them until suddenly the organization was captured by communists and taken over. And then they began to get silly and they began going on about climate change. And isn't and that, that the biggest crime is that all the real environmental problems are ignored? That is, of course, a very serious crime because there are many real environmental problems. You look at the pollution in China, for instance. You look at the disease in uh, throughout Africa. Overfishing. Prevented, and all that is largely dirt driven. All of these things could be stopped. These are the things that should be on the agenda in Paris, but they're not. The sole topic is how can we set up a global government to make the non-problem of, of global warming go away? Because if we don't all agree to that, the left will attack That's right, we're racist. The Stay there. Government. I want to talk about what's happening at the conference that you're covering, how we stop it. It was five years ago you got the secret Copenhagen plan and blew them wide open. Lord Moncton, straight ahead. My love is in league with liberty. And I wonder if people realize how horrible bondage is. We live off the incredible free market systems created in the Renaissance and that came out of the Magna Carta in Old England. We weren't at war with England in 1776. We were at war with tyranny and rediscovering the ideas that were actually formed on that island. That's why 1776 is worldwide. That's why I could speak at Bilderberg only a few thousand feet from the hotel where the prime minister was meeting and have 4,000 people in front of me from the UK and have them chant the answer to 1984 is 1776 because it wasn't some anti-British or anti-Scottish or anti-Irish idea. The answer to 1984 that's a Soviet globalist system is 1776. All of us want freedom. And now we face one of the greatest evils in human history openly in our face. Lord Christopher Moncton joins us from Paris, where two weeks ago we had terror attacks, where Obama is now grandstanding saying, pass global carbon taxes, world government, give us a world court, give us strict rules, give us strict treaties. 
or you're aiding the terrorist, the very terrorist they brought in. They really are, Lord Moncton, playing on.